Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll study about the introduction to traction, and then conjugative video will cover all about the traction system. Traction stands for movement. When some group of people, a single man or goods, is transporting from one place to another place using a machinery that is called traction. The machinery may be driven by wheels or by chain. The power is from different source. So whenever the traction system is powered from electrical energy, that time it is called electrical traction. And the electrical traction is the best use of electrical drive. So the main and important use of electrical drive is electrical traction system. So uh, the traction system actually provides three different kind of service. Those are electric trains, electric bus, tram, trolley, etc. and with battery driven and solar power device. So the electric train you have seen in your locality, the electric buses are consist of group of battery and those batteries actually charged up by using electrical energy and after getting fully charged, the electrical bus is ready to drive one from, from one place to another place. Tram is also kind of electrical bus but the difference is tram do not have any battery, sub, battery source it actually takes power from overhead transmission line and it run in a particular rail trolley are also kind of tram but it carry goods in minings or in, in your industries the battery driven and solar power device are so the solar power device is roof mounted device so if, a, if you take a consider electrical bus and the over the roof and over the uh, roof of electrical bus if there are solar panel installed and those solar panel is getting charged up when there is there is sun and the and the battery store charged to travel or to drive the motors those are called battery driven and solar power devices when you think about trains the trains are basically classified of two types one is mainline train and another is suburban train mainline train means when the train is traveling long distance and it do not have a frequent stop that is called mainline train so a train travel a long distance and do not have immediate stop with very less distance those are called mainline train you consider when you travel from one state to another state and uh, you are boarding in a train and to get another stop it at actually it at least take 50 to 60 km between two st two stop so if it, if a train is long haul train traveling long distance taking more stop so the motor has to be break the motor have chance to burn out so in mainline train uh, the motors what used in mainline trains it do not take many brakes so in long distance it do not have very frequent stops and about the suburban train suburban train actually takes very small distance within a city or between two or three cities and it has very frequent stop like in one kilometer two kilometer uh, maybe three kilometer like this so it actually uses intercity communication that is called suburban train. We'll study about, about, about this elaborately. So the mainline train, the train traveling long distance and do not have immediate stop with very less distance. And here the coaches or the wagons. Coaches means the human carrier or the wagon means the goods carrier. Actually the numbers of coaches or the number of wagons are connected together and pulled or pushed by locomotive locomotive is the main part of the train locomotive also called as engine so it may be diesel engine or steam engine or electrical engine so here we are studying about electrical energy so now we consider electrical engine engine so electrical engine or locomotive actually taking power from the overhead transmission line and it actually rectify it or using some power modulator which is mounted in the locomotive it actually changes its required power then after it faded to the motor and the motor is driven the locomotive and the locomotive actually pulled or pushed the train so we generally saw the pulling of coaches but when the 
train is traveling in a hilly area that means inclined places that time we need to push the train also or we need to push the coaches also so the driving motor and all the power modulator are actually mounted over the locomotive there is a instrument called pentograph which is actually used to collect electrical power from the operator transmission line and given to the power modulator so here another question comes if only the uh, locomotive will take power from the transmission line then how does there there will be light fan inside the coaches the simple answer for that below the coaches we have wheels and those wheels are actually connected to a generator and while the train is moving those uh, wheels are also moving and by the rotation of the wheels the generator generate electric energy and those electrical energy is stored for light and fan but what about the ac ac coaches yes if the full train is ac that means heavy power is needed and as we know that locomotive do not give power to the wagons or coaches so the coaches or wagon they all they should have their own power supply or power station that is why there will be one or two coaches in the front and back which consist of generator and the main element which is collecting power from the overhead transmission line is called pentograph and we will study the pentograph the line the overhead transmission line which is actually having the power a live conductor that is called contact wire okay and you might see there will be two wire one is the contact wire where the pentograph is actually touched and another is the wire hang the contact wire in general thing if you if you hang a wire uh, between two poles it might have a chance to make a sag so if there is sag formation so there will be irregularity between the touching of contact wire and the pentograph contact wire actually hung from catenary cable so there is a cable which actually creates sag and every 2 to 3 meter distance um, we have a hanging cable that is called dropper wire we'll see, i'll show the picture you'll better understand and the dropper wire actually hold the um, contact wire so the common structure of pentagraph is pentagon that is why its name called pentagraph so these are three different kind of pentagraph first second third the first is open frame type the second one is uh, fable type and third one is the cross arm type so these are the three basic practices of using pentagraph okay and this is the transmission arrangement or catenary let's say this is a pole and also this is another pole so whenever you connect a wire between two poles it, mo it must create sag like this and if some wire is moving through this line then there must be irregularity between the touching so we generally do not provide this uh, power line this is our actually power line or contact wire you can see this is very straight and the and the contact wire is hung by dropper wires so these are the dropper wires and it, it actually hung very less distance so that is why it actually create a straight line path and which actually allow the pentagraph to touch very smoothly okay so power the main thing if you study about the power supply it actually uses single phase ac you have seen a single wire that means it actually uses a single phase ac but when a train is traveling or when a train is collecting from single phase ac there are two remaining phases which actually create unbalance yes or no to avoid this what the railway do railway takes phase a for some distance and phase b for another distance and phase c for another distance and then it repeats when the phase a ends phase b starts yes or no if there will be a connection between a and b it won't happen na both the phase should not be any electrical connection so what happened there should be gap between phase a and b train is traveling and the pentagraph is touching to the phase a after that when phase a ends due to inertia the train travel little more distance 
and after traveling little more distance like one or uh, half meters it touches phase b likewise there the synchronization between phase a b c will happen so these are all about the main line trains but when you think about the suburban trains the train travel to carry man between the cities and due to shortage of space in the city it actually people try to make all the suburban train as underground train or flyover train and you can say you can you can tell them as a, a metros here there should not be any separate locomotives or separate engine so all the wagons or the man carrier it have the own engine in the between so the motors and the equipments are carried by the coaches itself okay that is called motor coaches that means all that you can say all the coaches do not have motor but a specified coaches the front back and middle it have two or three coaches those consist of motor on power modulator that is called motor coach and each motor coach can uh, carry another coach uh, one needs to two ratio or one is to one is to depend upon the populations or depend upon the load that means uh, one motor coach two trailer coach or one motor coach one trailer coach like this this actually as this is under the ground so high voltage is not possible because high voltage need more clearance right so high voltage is not possible that is why this type of system or this type of train usually try to move in 500 to 1000 volt range the kolkata metro is running 750 volt dc the tram you just single motor coach sometimes one or two trailer coach etc it like a bus bus structure but travel over a rail and collect electrical energy from the overhead lines and electric trolley you may not see in the electric trolley those are actually used in uh, coal mining or my any kind of minings underground minings in a factory it always runs over a rail so these are all about uh, um electrical tracks traction introduction uh, we'll have a good video uh, to visualize how this traction system work in a, for a train the catenary and the pantograph together they transmit the electricity required to power the motors of an electric train electricity is fed to the catenary via substations and when the pantograph enters into contact with the catenary it's as if the train were plugging itself into the circuit but how does it work the pantograph is a system of articulated arms fixed to the roof of the locomotive it unfolds and extends along a vertical axis the horizontal end piece of the pantograph is called the head this head is fitted with carbon strips their number and type depend on the nature and intensity of the current to be transmitted dc or ac for example these carbon strips slide along the catenary contact wire thus capturing the electricity required to power the train's traction motors the catenary is more complex than a simple power cable minimum it is made up of messenger cables contact wires droppers steady arms and tensioning devices all these elements are supported at regular intervals by a series of masts the catenary's architecture is designed so that even at high speed contact between the catenary contact wire and the pantograph is permanent and uninterrupted let's explain the cables of the overhead line are so heavy that suspended between two points they do not form a straight line but sag due to their weight for speeds above 60 kilometers an hour and in order to guarantee a continuous contact between the catenary and the head of the pantograph thus avoiding excessive power loss the catenary contact wire must be maintained in a horizontal position it must also be rigid enough to interact in a dynamic way with the pantograph the solution the contact wire is supported at regular intervals with droppers thanks to these droppers and tensioning loads the contact wire is maintained in the horizontal axis with a controlled level of rigidity 
These droppers have variable lengths calculated in accordance with several parameters, such as the tensioning loads of the contact and messenger wires or their mechanical characteristics. Alstom masters the technologies, expertise and simulation tools which allow the design of catenaries to be adapted to all train voltages and speeds.